In this video, we're going to try to solve the equation 3 times x plus 1 minus x is equal to 9. And like always, I encourage you to pause this video and try to work through this on your own. But the emphasis of this video is to not just get to the right answer, but to really understand what's happening when we do algebraically valid operations on, the, on either side of this equation. All right, so let's begin. So the first thing that my brain wants to do, and we've talked about this before, there's many different ways to often solve an equation, but my brain wants to simplify. And the first thing that looks a little bit hairy here is I have three times the expression x plus one, and so I might be able to simplify that if I multiply three times x and three times one. And so if I did that, I would get three x plus three minus x minus x is equal to nine. And so the key here is that the left-hand side of the second equation is equivalent to the left-hand side of the top equation. And so if the left-hand side of the top equation is equal to nine, well, so the left-hand side of this bottom equation is going to be equal to nine as well. Another way to think about it is, if the entire top equation is true, the entire bottom equation must be true, and vice versa. But let's keep going. So what's the next thing that we could do here if we're at least just trying to simplify the left-hand side? Well, my brain immediately sees I have three x's here, and then I want to take away an x right over there. So if I have three x's, and then I take away an x, how many x's do I have? Well, then I have two x's, and then I still have that plus three. Plus three is equal to nine. And so once again, this left expression is equivalent to this left expression, which is equivalent to this top left expression. And if any one of these equations are true, that must mean that all of these equations are true. But we could keep going. Now the next thing I like to do is isolate the x terms on one side. So I want to have a left side that just has this 2x there. Well, the way to do that is I would have to subtract 3 from the left side. But as we know, anything that we add or subtract or multiply or divide by on one side of the equation, we have to do on the other side of the equation. So I'll subtract three right over there. And why does that make sense? Well, if two x plus three is truly equal to nine, then if I take three away from two x plus three, if I just take three away, it's not necessarily going to be equal to nine anymore. So I have to take three away from nine in order for the equivalence of both sides of the equation to be true. And so what do I get? Well then, three and negative three cancel out. And on the left-hand side, I'm just left with the two x. And on the right-hand side, I have equals nine minus three is equal to six. Now I keep emphasizing it, because really that's the point of this video, that two x equals six is an equivalent equation to three times x plus one minus x equals nine. Because we've done these algebraically valid operations, we've been able to maintain the equality, and we've been able to say, look, if two x is equal to six, then we know that three times x plus one minus x is equal to nine, and if this top equation is true, then we also know that this last equation is true. But now we're in the home stretch, what can we do to solve for x? Well, if we just want to isolate an x here on the left-hand side, as you can imagine, we can divide the left-hand side by two, but if we divide the left-hand side by two, in order to maintain this equality, we have to divide the right-hand side by two. Remember, equation, it has, the, it has the word equality in it, or at least the first part of the word equality in it. We have, if we multiply, divide, add, or subtract to one side, then we have to do on the other side. And so we are left with x is equal to six divided by two, x is equal to three. And we have solved it. And really, x equals three continues to be an equation. And so the equation x equals three is going to be true if this top equation is true, and this top equation is going to be true if the equation x equals three is going to be true. Now let me finish off with a little bit of an interesting challenge for you. If I have five x is equal to six x, one temptation might be it kind of looks like this last step we had over here, and so why don't we divide both sides by a common factor? And so maybe we could divide both sides here by x, because this is five times x and this is six times x. And what would we get if we did that? Let's see, we would get, we would get five is equal to six, which it clearly is not equal to six. But what just happened here? Why did, is it, is it the fact that 5x can never be equal to 6x and we did algebraically valid operations and we got five equals six? Or did we do something wrong? Pause this video and think about it. Well, some of you might have realized 
that if x is an arbitrary non-zero number, and, and you know that, you could divide by x. But what if x is zero? If x is zero, you can't divide by zero. And so that's actually what's going on here, because if you do algebraically valid operations, you will actually see that this is a case where x is going to have to be equal to zero. So let me rewrite it. So this is 5x is equal to 6x. Even though it looks a lot like this last step that we had in the first equation, and you're tempted to immediately kind of knee-jerk to divide, you have to realize that I have an x term on both sides, or x terms on both sides. Let me combine them. So I could subtract 5x from both sides, or I could subtract 6x from both sides. Let me subtract 5x from both sides, and then see what happens. And we are going to get, on the left-hand side, 5x minus 5x is 0. And then that's equal to 6x minus 5x is equal to x. So we get the solution for that original equation, 5x is equal to 6x, is indeed x equals 0. So the big takeaway here is to appreciate the equivalence of these equations. If you do algebraically valid operations, and hopefully it's trying to make some intuitive sense why certain operations are valid and why other operations are not valid. But if you do valid operations, it's really saying that each step of your solution, each of those equations are equivalent to the equations before it. If one of them is true, then the others are true. But if you do an algebraically invalid operation, like you, you're dividing by x and x could be equal to 0, then you can, you can start running into problems.